This video is designed to help amateur astronomers understand what is happening inside their mount when it is tracking an object through the sky. The equipment used is described in detail on our website at www.helva.co.uk. One of the primary objectives of this video is to demonstrate that the declination or deck gear does not move during tracking, except for when the operator is slowing the object of interest into position and only during guiding if there is a correction pulse sent from your guiding solution. The object in the primary and in the guide view, that's top left and top right respectively, is the same star, SAO 110665. The guide scope focal length is approximately one quarter of that of the focal length of the C8. This star is within half a degree of the celestial equator. During my recording time, it traversed approximately 15 degrees of azimuth between south-southwest and southwest, and dropped 5 degrees of altitude. This slew demonstrates that the x-axis of both cameras are oriented in parallel to the right ascension axis of the mount. We can add the 8 seconds to drift in and out of our field of view together, giving a total transit time of 16 seconds for the whole field of view. Knowing that the star of choice is on the celestial equator, or close enough to make no difference, we can calculate the field of view from the approximation that the Earth rotates once in one day, which is 24 hours. So giving 360 degrees in 24 hours, or 15 degrees in one hour, or one quarter of a degree in one minute, or one two hundred and fortieth of a degree in one second, 16 degrees to transit the field of view give 16 two hundred and fortieths of a degree, or one fifteenth of a degree, which is four arc minutes. Here I have taken 18 minutes of real-time recording and played it back at 20 times speed, adding an echo to show the apparent movement of the star relative to the camera's field of view. Zooming in on the curve plotted out by our star, we can estimate the periodic error of the right ascension drive by simply measuring the peak-to-peak -peak data. In this case, we can see that the peak-to-peak -peak of the curve covers approximately one quarter of the field of view, and we know that the field of view is four arc minutes, so we can estimate the periodic error, or PE, at one arc minute peak-to-peak. Again at 20 times speed, we see that adding guiding does not produce a perfectly circular star. This is impossible due to factors such as seeing, collimation, and the fact that guiding corrections are only added once a star has moved out of position to push it back to its original place in the field of view. However, the improvement is significant, as can be seen here. Taking the apparent error from the order of one arc minute in eight minutes of exposure, to under half an arc minute for the same film or exposure duration. Assuming that the auto guider performs without error over time, which is by no means a given, then auto guiding ensures that the target will remain within a relatively well defined area, as opposed to the constant oscillation and continual drift away from the start position, which is experienced through tracking alone. Such is the difference between an open and a closed loop control solution. 